Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox and our intro to Maya series. Today we're going to learn about the bevel tool. Let's jump right in. Here we are back inside of Maya and we have our very fine looking low poly room. And let's learn how to use the bevel tool and then we'll practice with some of the objects we have in our scene. First, I'm going to create a cube going up here and I'm going to move it off to the side. And Maya um, defines beveling as taking an edge and expanding a face from it. So I'll show you what that looks like. Here's my cube. I'm going to go into um, edge component mode by holding down the right mouse button, choosing edge, I'm going to select this edge. And there's different, different places where you can get to beveling. So we have our modeling toolkit you can get to from here. There's a beveling option up here. That icon is beveling. You can get it to it from this edit mesh tab, going down to bevel. And there's also an option box. And finally, you can use the marking menu. So holding down shift, holding down the right mouse button, and then choose bevel. For now, I'm going to choose this one just so it's visually um, it's easier to see what I'm doing. And now Maya has beveled that edge. I'm gonna reduce the fraction so you guys can see. And the intensity of this slider is a bit strong, which is gonna reduce that. And this is the edge we have beveled, and here is the face that Maya has created. And you can see this is a nice way to define your form more. You can add segments to it, you can change the depth of it, so we can make it concave. You can turn chamfer on and off. Right? That one's very useful for once we get into subdivision modeling. And then um, I'm just gonna control Z a few times. You can also like go up to here, edit mesh, bevel, and in the option box, there's even more options for you to see, or if you want to see even more options, right? We can bevel it. And there's actually like, a, I'm just gonna reduce the fraction for a second. There's a cog wheel here that has some other options that you can add to this window just by clicking on it, right? So now it's added smoothing angle. I'm gonna uncheck that, I don't need it. I'm gonna close my option box. Yeah, so that's there if, if you ever wanna play around with the, um, the bevel window. I'm gonna get rid of the cube and I'm going to show you bevel on a plane as well. So here's a plane, going to move off to the side, frame in on it. And if you, you can bevel edges, so if I can select, okay, so when you have a plane such, such as this with all these subdivisions, if I want to select these edges along here, I can shift select each one and add to it, or I can select one, double click on the last edge, and it'll select all the edges in between there, or it'll do its best guess to kind of figure out what you want. And then now I can hit bevel, and it's bevel that edge, it's giving me the, the faces in there. Yeah, so that's how you bevel, and then you can control the fraction just like this. By the way, that shift select also works with uh, faces, so if I'm, if I'm in face mode, I can select that one, select that one. So I'm, I'm selecting this one, Holding down shift, double clicking this one, and it selected all the ones there. In case I didn't mention that earlier, um, hopefully I did. If I just double click on this, it'll select all the faces on that um, object. So, yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of this plane, and I wanna go back and view my scene. It's over here. Uh, a hotkey to, to view all the objects in your scene is just to press A they'll bring everything else back into view. And now let's practice with some of the shapes we have in, in the viewport here, the scene. Let's start with the shelves because those probably just require a bevel. We're gonna practice with the bevel along with some of the things we already know too. So keep adding to our toolbox. I'm gonna go into edge mode. So I'm holding down the right mouse button, dragging up to edge, selecting all the edges and then I can hit bevel here, or I can hold down the shift key, hold down the right mouse button, and go to bevel. And then I'm just gonna reduce that fraction to about here is good. 
I'm gonna go into object mode and I'm gonna turn off wireframe on shader for a second so you guys can see the difference. We have this nice highlight now on this piece that's breaking up that hard edge. And it just makes it a little more realistic um, and more defined. Now I can get rid of this one, I can turn back on wireframe on shaded, and I can control D to duplicate it. And now we have a couple shelves that are beveled. So that's pretty quick. Next, let's work on um, the picture frame. So I'm gonna frame it on this one. I want all those edges, so I'm gonna go into edge mode, select everything, and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key, hold down the right mouse button, bevel, and I'm gonna reduce that fraction. Now I wanna select this face. I have to go back into face mode, right? So to get into face mode, I can hold down the right mouse button, select face. Now I can select this face. I wanna extrude that. I can press the extrude button or I can hold down the shift key, hold down the right mouse button, drag down to extrude, and I'm gonna create a little bit of offset. And I wanna push that in, so I'm gonna extrude again, holding down the shift, holding down extrude, holding down the extrude, holding down the right mouse button, extrude, and then there we go. A little inset for that picture frame. Let's go back into object mode, so you can go here or holding down the right mouse button. Just getting used to using this marking menu is what I suggest, right? And we have our picture frame. I don't need these ones anymore. I can delete them. I can take this one, control D, move it over. And maybe I want this one a little bit smaller like before. Just scale that down from the middle. And I'm gonna control D to duplicate it and bring the other one across. And there we go. Maybe it's a little bit high, so let's shift select all these, drag it down a little bit, and it looks pretty good. All right, so next let's work on this coffee table. Now, I wanna work on this coffee table. Some of the other objects are in the way. I could go into the channel box, start putting things on its own layer and um, making it invisible, or I can go into the outliner and maybe like hiding some of them but a better way would be to isolate it. So to isolate an object, there's a button up here, right? And if you press it, that'll be the only thing that you can see. And the hotkey for that is control one. So we have our object and I want to bevel everything, right? So holding down the um, right mouse button to go into edge mode, drag the selection box over everything. That's going to select all those edges, holding down the shift key, or going into here. So holding down the shift key, holding down the right mouse button, and bevel. I want to reduce this fraction just to give it a nice little highlight. And then I want to extrude a base from the bottom. So I'm going to go into face mode, select my face, holding down the shift key again, holding down the right mouse button, and extrude. And now I can offset this and I can extrude it down. But instead of going and extruding with the button or choosing the extrude uh, tool, what I can do is use the hotkey that redoes my last tool command. So that that's the key G on the keyboard. So if I press G, you can see that this has reset and now I can drag this down. It's essentially redone that last command. And now I can go back into object mode and while I have this object, I can also, um, if I want, snap it to um, move the pivot point to the bottom and snap it to the ground, because I know the floor of my room is at zero, right? So I can do it in the method we had in the last video, or I can use my hotkeys, right? Holding down D, holding down V, drag down, and then holding down X and just moving it to that grid line. And I, I can do that in the side view, but it's, you can do it in perspective too. Let's go out of isolation mode and see, and our object is on the ground, right? Very easy. And let's do the TV next. The TV, we're being viewed, it's being viewed from the back. We don't really need to work on the front, but maybe we'll inset it just to give you guys an option if you want to have the, the perspective from the front for the TV. Okay, let's choose all the edges. Um, 
holding down shift, holding your right mouse button, go into bevel, reducing that fraction. Right, I'm going to turn off um, the wireframe on shader for a second so you can kind of see right what that looks like. And let's bring that back. And let's work on the front too. Um, select our object. Let's go into face mode. We'll select this face. And let's extrude. So I'm holding down the shift key, holding down the right mouse button to get this marking menu. By the way, if it jumps there, you just have to bring it back. So sometimes you accidentally go into the wrong option. Just bring it back to this dot and go down to extrude. And now I can offset it. And I want to press, I want to inset it a little bit, right? Or extrude in a little bit. I'm going to press G. Just push that in a little bit. There we go. Go back to object mode and our TV is done. And the last object I want to work on today is just this coffee table or the cylinder that's supposed to be a coffee table. Let's um, frame in on it. It'll be easier to work on this in isolation mode. So I'm just going to isolate it by pressing this button. And I'm just scale this down. This will be the top. That should be good. And I want to select all the faces in here, inset it, and extrude it down. But these are triangles. So you can't select one and select another one. It doesn't work like that. You can do it with the side. So if I select one, select this one, those are all quads. And Maya allows you to do that. Now, there's an option though to select that quickly. And up here, you can see there's a drag option. It's a drag select. The hotkey for that is tab. So when you hold down tab, it toggles to that. So if I hold down tab, I can drag now my mouse around here and drag all those faces. And now I can extrude, right? Press the extrude button. Just switch it up a bit so you guys can see. I can offset this now. So now it's going to have a stem or a, a leg, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to press G to repeat. Drag that down. And then I want to press G again. Offset this out. Something like that is good. Press G again. So you can see how fast that hotkey G can work for us. And now we have our coffee table. Let's go out of isolation mode. So here we go. My coffee table is on the ground. Not coffee table. My side table is on the ground. I guess it could be a coffee table. And I want to move the pivot down. So I'm going to go into side view this time so it's easier for you guys to see. Uh, let's go into side view. Let's isolate it. And remember, these all work independently of each view. So I've isolated this one, but the other ones are unaffected, right? This one's still in the wireframe mode from earlier or from the last part. Let's frame in. Let's move this down. So holding down D, holding down V, it toggles these options. Just drag down to there, right? And now I just want to snap it to the grid, holding down X and snap. Right? And there we go. That is our coffee table. And we've managed to essentially give a bunch of the objects in the scene a bit more um, form and um, they look better. So let's have a quick peek. There you go. You can see the kind of the ones we worked on, how different they look, right? So I'm going to turn this back on. That should be good for today. Yeah. And actually, one last thing before we wrap up today, let's save. So saving is important. And let's do it by incrementing and save, right? So just go up here to your file, increment and save. So. All right, that wraps up another one for us. The room is coming along quite nicely, and we're adding some tools to our own personal toolbox. Um, if you're finding all this useful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you in the next one.